Hello everybody, welcome to freetradingvideos.com. I wanted to talk just a little bit about DRYS, Dry Ships Incorporated. Uh, this stock has been on a tear recently. Higher highs and higher lows. Very, very nice uptrend. Uh, runs up to the top here, makes a nice double top, fails to do what it needs to do to keep an uptrend intact. Sells off sharply on the highest volume print to date. And uh, that's almost a bearish engulfing candle taking out the last 15 bars. <laughs> um, it's trouble for that stock, right? So nice resistance area. We'll be back up in here. Also, of course, at the top. So we can put that in as well. It's going to be trouble for that. Right, also, at the previous swing highs, we're going to have some interesting times uh, coming back up through this resistance area. Is also the round number of 100 things like that. The stock has also broken the 50 MA right through here. Right? Again, I'm not any kind of slacker volume either. Now we've got lower lows and lower highs as well. Stock pulls right back into a very nice level of support on this chart, this area. Okay, so when I look at this chart and the stock has rallied up nicely, there's also some Fibonacci retracements we can look at. So the sell-off all the way from around 130 down to 70. All right, so grab your Fibonacci retracements and we'll just do a quick study here. See what kind of bounce we've gotten recently. It's not an accident that this stock has bounced almost exactly to the $100 mark, the century mark, which is a psychological edge, psychological problem, uh, and the 50% retracement of the sell-off. So just to talk about the psychology of that for a minute, there are people who will buy a stock in this area up here. They don't want to miss out on something, uh, but they also haven't waited for a good setup, for instance, and when the stock fails, starts heading south, they're not sure what to do. So they may end up holding that thing, now turning that into a longer-term investment, but taking a ride from 130 down to 70 hurts a lot. <laughs> uh, take it from me. I've done it a couple times, and some anomaly of that, so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's not a great way to trade reason these things are resistance on the way back up because what am I going to want to do if the stock comes back up? I will want to sell out and that's what causes overhead resistance. So if I'm being beaten up badly, sometimes I would even average down, right? Just some old habits that I had I'm telling you about. If I bought more down here at 70, my average price on the entire lot then, if it's the same number, is going to be exactly at the 50% retracement. That's the area where I'm going to get all my money back. Okay? And that's going to be a gift to me. So I'm going to sell out there. That's what can cause a great level of resistance in that area. And again, the $100 mark is right here as well. So if you ever sit through a stock and it heads south on you uh, without a protective stop, and you're just waiting for it to come back so you can get out for a zero gain, that's asymmetrical risk. And you're basically sitting through an endless drawdown just to make no money. All right, and if it sounds like I'm preaching, it's because I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made at the beginning of my career a long time ago. I'd rather have you avoid that. So anyway, just be very, very careful of that. wanted to show you another great way to analyze some things. If I look at dry ships compared to the S&P 500, which is a great thing to do in Yahoo Finance, uh, just bring up any uh, chart, for instance, dry ships, and you can go over and see that you can just click on the S&P 500 and you'll get that over and on top. So over the last six months, the stock, like I said, has been on tear. Over the last three months, the stock has also been doing very, very well, 20% better than the S&P. But over the last month, it's actually been doing uh, poorly, looking at just the one month of data. And over five days, it's been doing fairly well, rallied a little bit stronger than the S&P. And today, and again, today uh, would be December 4th, 2007, it actually failed a little bit further than the S&P. So very nice to have that in our camp. You can also look at Google Finance, which is a great website, especially for news. I bring up a chart. You can grab down here and change the way that you look at the news. So this will print out A, B, C, all the way through you know Z if you wanted to, and it will show you on that chart, the corresponding news events that happened during that time frame. It's a very, very nice place to check news, and uh, it's very helpful to get an idea about what the stock is doing. So anyway, that's my take on dry ships. It's not doing 
uh, it's sort of just looking like the broad markets right now, not exhibiting uh, that much relative strength or weakness, at least during the smaller time frame that we've been looking at that. Yeah, namely over the last one month, right? And the last three months especially. All right, that was very, very good. Uh, but it's waning. So you can see that on the three months it's doing nicely, but as you go smaller to smaller time frames, it's not really keeping up with even the S&P 500. So be very careful with that. And um, I hope this helps analyze trades a little bit better, especially when comparing relative strength and weakness stocks to the broad market. All right, very good. Thank you for joining me on that quick little dissertation on dry ships and uh, happy trading.